Hi guys, so there's one other topic uh, in Chapter 7 that I wanted to talk to you about, and that is the work energy theorem. Um, and before we do that, we need to introduce a definition, and that definition is kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is basically the energy that's associated with motion. And your book often uses K. I'm going to call it KE. And it's equal to 1 half the mass of an object times its velocity squared. So this is our definition for kinetic energy. And the work energy theorem says that the net work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So this is kind of a, a lot of things to connect together. So let me show you this um, by way of example. So remember this example, if I have an object, so suppose I got a coffee cup here, and I'm, we look at the, uh, the free body diagram from it, it would have some uh, weight that's pointing down, some lifting force if I'm going to lift it up. Suppose I lift it up here. And then there would be, a, you know, a displacement. This, that would be, um, often we use the letter H to mean height if I'm, I'm lifting something up. Um, and remember, we looked at this situation before when talking about work, and we found that, uh, you know, the work to lift would be the force, the lifting force times uh, the displacement, because they're in the same direction, so that would give us mgh. And we also found that the work done by gravity in this situation, since gravity is pointed down, but the uh, displacement is pointed up, this would be a negative quantity, negative mgh. So this is kind of the simplest example of this work energy principle is that, so the work, the net work is the total. So that would be the lifting work plus the work done by gravity. So in this situation, it's mgh minus mgh it equals zero. So in this case, the change in kinetic energy when lifting this object is zero. Okay, so this is kind of a boring example. Let's consider the example now where instead of lifting up the object, suppose you drop it. You've lifted it up. And now we're going to drop it. So we still have the force of gravity that's pointed down. And now there's going to be some, you know, the displacement would be down through some height, let's say. And we're just going to drop it the same distance to the, to the table or to the floor or whatever. So in this situation, you're not doing any work because you're no longer applying a lifting force. But the work of gravity is going to be positive because both the force of gravity and the displacement are pointed in the same direction, and that would equal mgh. Well, let's apply the work energy theorem. So the net work is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. So that's going to say that mgh is going to equal 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. So that's to say it's going to equal the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy because that's what a change in means, right? So let me just write that here. This equals you know, the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. If you're dropping the object, it doesn't have any initial kinetic energy. So this would be zero because the initial velocity would be zero. 
And then you can see you can solve this, for example, for uh, the final velocity and find out how fast it would be uh, when it hits the table. So notice this factor of m will cancel. doesn't depend on the mass. Uh, you can see then that v final would equal uh, the square root of 2 times g times h. Now notice, remember, back to 1D kinematics, we had this expression, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2ad. So in this case, we would have no v initial. You can see you can get the same result. So this is the same thing um, solved in a different way. And this is a nice example of how, you know, we before we did this problem before with kinematics, now we're talking about it with regards to work and the, the energy uh, work energy theorem. And this is a, a nice example how, uh, as you learn more in physics, uh, you acquire more ways to solve problems. So let me just put here a new way to solve uh, an old problem. Okay, let's uh, let's look at a another question. Let me show you a little bit more of like a a book example rather than this really simple example. So I have one in here to show you. Um, so consider this example. We have a baseball, mass 145 grams, is traveling at 32 meters per second, um, and it moves a field, fielder's glove backward 25 centimeters when the ball is caught. What was the average force exerted by the ball on the glove? So let's draw ourselves a cartoon. We've got a baseball. It's, uh, it's going at 32 meters per second. And man, uh, it's going to hit a glove. So a uh, glove, I guess. And that glove then is going to move backward. through a displacement of uh, 25 centimeters. And we want to know uh, the force exerted on the glove. Um, and we can solve this problem by applying the work energy theorem. So if we look at the work that's done on the ball, um, The net work is going to equal the change in kinetic energy. Um, so consider, you know, there's a force on the glove by the ball, and there's a force back on the ball by the glove. And if we're talking about the force on the ball, times the distance, so that's the work done on the ball, that is going to equal the change in kinetic energy. So in other words, the kinetic energy final of the ball minus the kinetic energy initial. Now, when it comes to rest, this will be zero. So in other words, we have an expression um, Oh, and notice there will be a negative sign here because the force uh, on the ball by the glove is pointing in this way, but the displacement is this way. So we would have negative um, force times the distance, 25 centimeters, is going to equal negative 1 half uh, mv squared.
or actually, let me just write this out totally. So to explain in more detail why this would be zero is because one half mass v final squared, well, when it comes to rest, this v final will be zero. So this will be zero minus one half mv initial squared. Um, so then you see we can solve this for the force. going to equal negative one-half mv initial squared divided by negative d comes positive um, and we can put in our numbers here so the mass will be 0.145 kilograms the initial velocity is 32 and the dis distance that it goes through is 0.25 and when we crunch the numbers, we would find that this force is about 300 newtons. So this gives you uh, an example of solving a problem using the work energy theorem. In this case, we used it to find the force.